Hello, hello, and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Layla, and today I'm going to be giving you an update on my finances for October 2023. Happy November, y'all. I hope you had a great month of October. I'm gonna go ahead and jump into everything because these videos are always really long, and I'm gonna start with the financial goals that I set for the month. My first goal was to put at least $2,000 to my 2024 Roth IRA sinking fund, and this is so that I can just max out my 2024 Roth IRA basically on January 1st. And I did achieve this goal, which is very exciting. I actually put more than 2,000, and I will give you that exact number in just a moment when I go through my actual expenses. My second goal was to complete my debt over it scholarship slash grant savings, and this was a total of $1,000, and I did achieve this goal. And as I've been talking about that, I said that this is coming in November, and this is finally the video where I announce that scholarship or grant, whatever you want to call it. I really wanted this and my future scholarships to be more legitimate, like to go through a website or have some sort of legitimate grant. But all of that, I, first of all, I don't know. So if any of y'all have insight on that, because I don't think I can do a grant, you have to get like a lot of paperwork signed and other people involved. And, and you know, overall, this isn't like a crazy amount of money. So I don't think I need to go down that route. Um, I did want this to be a scholarship so that it was only used for paying down debt, like somehow uh, whoever was handling the money would be able to log into the account or like call the people and pay off the debt with that money. But neither of those things are happening. It's just gonna, it's just gonna be what it is, you know? If you win, you're going to get $1,000 from me. Whoever the winner ends up being, you can receive the $1,000 either through Venmo PayPal or Zelle. If the person who happens to win is international, there's typically a fee associated with that or, you know, because of the exchange rate, then it's it changes how much you actually get. Uh, whatever $1,000 USD is in your currency is what you will receive. So no matter what, it's going to be 1000 USD. So if you want to enter into this giveaway for $1,000, there is a Google form in my description box, a link to a Google form, and you can fill out the few questions that are asked there. I am actually going to personally pick somebody from all of the submissions, so this is gonna take me some time to go through, um, but I'm going to hand pick someone to give this money to. As for your answers to the questions for the submission, please do not be dishonest. Um, please don't exaggerate things. I am hoping that just sharing this amongst the people who actually watch my videos, I can, you know, reduce the number of submissions I get. So please only one submission, first of all. If you submit more than one time, like, I will not select you. <laughs> so one submission. Second thing, just please be honest in your answers. And, you know, one, just because you say something, it doesn't mean I'll necessarily select you. I'm, I'm assuming I'm going to get quite a few submissions and there's only going to be one winner. So if you give me uh, an honest but very sad story, like, just know that you may not win and that doesn't discredit your story is what I'm trying to say, you know? You'll also see that you can nominate somebody for the $1,000. So if you're somebody who just feels like you don't you don't need the $1,000 or you don't want to submit for yourself, but you want to nominate somebody else, you can do that. And finally, I'm gonna ask that you do not share this outside of our community. I would really appreciate that. Like, it's okay if you wanna share it with your spouse or, you know, your significant other, maybe your child, your parent, something like that. That is completely fine. But beyond that, I really don't want want this like I'm not going to put giveaway in the title I'm not going to put it in I'm going to try to avoid it in the description box because I don't want people coming here just to you know just to enter the giveaway but they don't they're not like part of this community and actually trying to improve their finances but otherwise this is open to anyone if you want to put it to your debt you can put all of it to your debt if you want to put some to debt to spending to a vacation, to whatever it is that you wanna use this money for this time around, it is going to be whatever you want it to be. I will have this open for about a month, so I'm probably going to close the Google form by December 1st or so, but I will keep y'all updated. And just know that this is the first of many to come. I am planning on doing this two times a year, so it's going to be around this time, like the fall time before the holidays, and then it will be 
in the springtime going into the summer. And then hopefully at some point I can figure out how to make this more legitimate and maybe one day even increase how much I'm giving away each time. So thank you all for being here and I'm excited to uh, find out who the winner will be. But that's it for the goals that I set for October. Happy to say that I achieved them both and now we can move on to my income and then my actual spending for the month. Okay, first up is going to be my work income. This is my net work income. So $4,051.74. Outside of my YouTube channel, I do have a full-time job. I'm a Salesforce consultant. I do have a few videos related to this linked down below in my description box, as well as the Talent Stacker program, which is how I got into this industry in the first place. But yeah, $4,051.74. Next is my business income, my gross business income, $3,684.53. Pretty strong month overall. I've definitely done better, but this was better than I think last month and the month before. So yeah, happy to see this over 3,000. And I do make a video every single month where I share exactly where my income came from. So if you're interested in that, that will be up this weekend. And again, those are gross earnings, so I do have to pay taxes on the well I set taxes aside each month and then I pay quarterly estimated taxes other income or extra income that came to $532.82 I did get a bonus a, a sign up bonus so that's why this is a little bit higher and that's always exciting I love earning extra income I also give a breakdown of where this extra income comes from in that video I was talking about so that will be up later this weekend and then I did pull from sinking funds and that came to $2,133 and I will share with y'all as I go through my actual spending which sinking funds I pulled from. Obviously it's quite a lot so you might be able to guess already if you've been watching my, my videos for some time. Um, but yeah, I'll explain it as we get to that. So altogether I was working with about $10,402 for October. All right, so let's go through my spending. This top, the blue section is all of my sinking funds. My taxes sinking fund, that's for my quarterly estimated payments from my side hustles or my, my, for my business. Budgeted 500, I did end up setting aside 500. My gift sinking fund, that's 75. Car slash car maintenance, 100. Car insurance, 100. Beauty, 75. The debt over it grant, sinking fund, which I did complete, that was, I, I did earn some interest in September. So all I had to save there to reach 1000 was $448.93, which is good. And then my 2024 Roth IRA sinking fund, I ended up saving, I budgeted 2300, I did want to do at least 2000, but ended up saving $2,997.96. So definitely went much further on that one than I expected to. So that's good because it got me ahead for November and now I don't need to save as much in November. And then even in December, I don't have to worry about it in December. So I'll be able to save for my other goals. Furniture sinking fund, I ended up changing this to zero. This is gonna be off of my budget. I actually, I think I already had removed it for November and it won't be on December's cause I don't need to keep adding to it. So furniture sinking fund got zero. My brokerage account, I budgeted 100. I did contribute 100 to that. Donate, I budgeted 100, ended up doing 150. And that was because in, if y'all remember in September, I only donated 50. So I wanted to make up for that in October. Um, so that worked out. House slash utilities, I budgeted 1,131. That ended up being 1,130. So just a dollar off, which is good. Household. <laughs> So I budgeted 600 because I was like, oh, I'll probably buy something for the house, like furniture wise. Over the last few months, I had been saving for furniture. That's what the $6,000 was for. And the intention, my intention overall was to start purchasing stuff in 2024. But I realized like, I really just want stuff now. Like we're in the house. There's only a couple of months left in in 2023. I have the money for it. And yeah, I just, if I'm in the house, my boyfriend and I are in the house and we want to have these things, like why not just, just go for it if we have the money. So <laughs> as you can see, I spent $2,008.92. So this is where one of my sinking funds came in. I did pull 2000 from my furniture sinking fund and you'll see that updated final balance in just a moment. But I ended up buying 
just about everything that we need except for like the larger things and also the bulk of this was split 50 50 with my boyfriend yeah you can literally see a whole list here of of the things that i bought it's mostly like living room stuff kitchen table i got little trash cans some things were really really cheap like i got trash cans for our bathrooms from the dollar store like literally dollar tree they were like a dollar and 50 cents each <laughs> not even a dollar 25 maybe i did have to fix the sink and <laughs> had to pay for that got some specific light bulbs some lamps um i did get garden what are they called a raised garden bed two of those did buy a new vacuum because ours like stopped sucking things up got some cups got the coffee bar and tv console like yeah you can see everything here and honestly, I'm really happy that we ended up buying these things because all that's left now is a bed, a mattress, and like a new bed because we want to get a larger bed as well. And then a couch, which we did go shopping for. We were just trying out some couches. We also laid on a few mattresses, but weren't really looking for that. Um, but I mentioned recently that we're just having... Well, from that one trip, we did not find a couch that we were like absolutely set on. So just waiting on that. So I still have over $4,000 in that sinking fund and we're gonna be splitting those. So like, I think I'll have more than enough for a couch and a mattress for, and we'll probably wait until 2024 for those purchases. Like I said, the bulk of this I did split with my boyfriend 50-50, but some things on here I did not. So you can see I bought a love sack, like a literal, it's sitting behind this camera. Actually, it's the super sack from, from love, love Sack. It's like the oversized bean bag, basically, but with foam in it. That I paid for all myself because this is my office and, you know, this isn't for him. So, uh, yeah, I paid for that myself. The garden stuff I paid for myself and the bookshelves. The bookshelves are also behind the camera. And I'm super excited about those because I have a lot of books, but now I have much more space for all my books that I need to, I need to actually buy books so I can fill out the bookshelf. <laughs> but that will be later when I'm not doing a low spend year. So that is that. Obviously I was over budget, but I had the money for it. So I, it didn't feel bad. I was very happy to make those purchases and so far so good. Groceries, I budgeted $400, ended up spending $316.89, so $83.11 under budget. I actually did good in October, but that's really because I skipped a week of grocery shopping. Ended up going to DC, like the DMV area for work, and that I left on a Sunday and didn't come back until a Tuesday, so it was a quick trip. But because of that, I was like, okay, I have some food in the fridge, in the pantry, in the freezer that I can make work for the next few days. So I was like, I'm just gonna go with this and make it make it last until I need to get groceries again. I was glad I was able to do that so I did not go over budget here. Food out, I budgeted 75, ended up spending $29.36. I did actually go out to eat more than what you're seeing here, but that was like at the airport. So like leaving for my work trip and then coming back, I got dinner both times at the airport, but I was able to expense that. So my company paid for it and I'm not counting that here. Gas for my car, budgeted 60, ended up spending $71.45. I did go twice just drove a lot more in october so had to get it two times it's fine health and beauty i budgeted 250 ended up spending i went a little over budget 299 dollars and 43 cents i bought vitamins i got a massage and then i think i'm missing some things here actually this is my medication there's quite a few things listed at the top but i don't remember what oh i guess i got more vitamins i just didn't list them all out I think I stocked up on, not stocked up, I just need to, needed to repurchase like five other supplements that I take. So that's what's included there. Dogs budgeted 162 and one cent, that is correct. Business, I budgeted a thousand, ended up being a little bit over budget, $1,297.45. In my income report video that is coming later this weekend, I also give a breakdown of my business expenses and you can see what I spent my money on there. Netflix, I budgeted $23.48, that is correct. Gym is $39.99. Gifts, I budgeted $150 because my sister's birthday is in October. Ended up spending $132.43, so I pulled $133 from my gift, sink my gift sinking fund. There are two things on here that I did not budget for, and the first one, personal. 
So y'all know I'm doing a low spend year. I'm trying, I'm not buying anything in the, trying to avoid things in the personal category. Clothes, books, shoes, that sort of thing. I recently shared that I got stickers designed for debt over it, like little finance stickers. Those are now available on my Etsy shop. Because of that, I was like, you know what? I kind of want some book stickers, some just like random cute, I got like a Walking Dead sticker, a SpongeBob sticker, like things that I like. So I got stickers and that I spent $14.88 on stickers. Uh, these were from Etsy and I was very excited to get them. So it's no problem with me. I, you know, not something I typically spend money on, but I don't regret those purchases by any means. Next is fun slash entertainment. That came to $49.94. Technically this is like gifts as well, I guess I could say. So I bought movie tickets for myself, my mom, and my sister. Um, they offered to like pay me back, but I was like, no, it's fine. Mostly because I invited them. Um, we ended up seeing the movie Spirited Away, which if you know that that movie came out in like 2001 or 2003 or something. But every year it comes to theaters on the last weekend of October and going into November. And I, I saw it many years ago and I really, really liked that movie. Um, I'm not usually like into to anime, but that movie is so good. I just love it so much. It's, it's adorable and like kind of creepy. So I did want to see it again. So I decided to invite my mom and my sister and we went and saw that together, which was fun. Altogether, I spent $10,123.12, and if we exclude my savings and investments, I actually spent $4,428.78, which is pretty good. All right, now we are going to go to my savings, investments, and net worth, and I'm going to go, this is going to be on the full spreadsheet so you can see everything laid out. And we're gonna start with my savings, my sinking funds. And these are all from the final day of October after the interest came through in my Marcus by Goldman Sachs high yield savings account. Taxes, this is money, like I said, that I put aside for my estimated taxes. That is now at $956.71. Emergency fund, $12,182.26. This is just growing from the interest, it's like, at this point, $45, $46 per month. And obviously that will keep increasing as long as the interest is the same and I keep the money in there. So I love that. For gifts, I put some money in, took some money out. So that is down to $458.41. Travel, I didn't add to that. So that's at $4.26. Cars slash car maintenance, $2,727.70. Car insurance, $507. 11 beauty 150 and 98 cents sabbatical i didn't add anything to that that's 14 dollars and 82 cents house down payment didn't add 102 31 furniture slash home like i said i pulled from that so that's at four thousand forty five dollars and 98 cents 2024 roth ira that is now at five thousand two hundred sixty five dollars and 71 cents which is very exciting uh, that one's growing quick and will soon be complete. And then the debt over it scholarship, $1,004.22 for a total savings of $27,420.47. You can see that my savings actually increased quite a bit compared to last month. This is where I'm seeing the most growth because that's a little bit easier to control. Like as long as I'm saving the money, then it will increase but that's not the case with my investments, which y'all are about to see. And I'm sure many of y'all can relate because the stock market right now is just not doing so great. Uh, it's a little upsetting to see, but I know in the long run, like it just, it doesn't matter. Let me take that back. I wouldn't say it's upsetting. It's just like, I want to be at 100K, you know, my net worth to be at 100K, but my investments are really hindering that. The stock market is really hindering that. So let's go through those numbers. My Roth IRA, is now at $21,422.55. So down almost 3%. It just keeps dropping. Um, yeah, we'll see what we end the year at. My 401k, that went up 4%. <laughs> That's because I contribute quite a bit to it each month. That is at $14,617.28. 
in one finance or in one invest this is down 2.6 percent at six thousand one hundred forty two dollars and twelve cents my brokerage account with vanguard that is up 10.6 percent nine hundred fifteen dollars and twenty seven cents this is because the amount there is just small so it doesn't uh if it goes up or if it goes down it's a pretty big percentage Coinbase, and y'all remember I said anytime the market is down, Coinbase goes up or like crypto goes up. And anytime the market's up, crypto goes down. It's really weird. That is up $475.35, so up 27.5%. I did not put anything in. The bulk of this is, is Bitcoin, so I guess that is, is going up for whatever reason. So it's just interesting to see that because because every time that this happens, that's that's the case. Like anytime my the rest of my investments are down, Bitcoin is up. Altogether, the amount that I have invested is down 0.12% at $43,572.57. The good news though is that my net worth still did increase. So if we come down to the yellow section, this is my net worth. And the only difference here is that I added in my checking account. Um, well, let me say that, let me start over. So I do not include my taxes sinking fund in my net worth or as an asset in my net worth. I don't count my car as a part of my net worth. That's just personal preference. But I do add in what I have in my checking accounts because that's obviously like cash that's available. And then of course, I no longer have any debt whatsoever, no more student loan debt. So my net worth is 71600 $63.81, so still an increase, but uh, a little bit less than $2,000 of an increase. But that's okay, that's still good. I'm excited to see it going up. I don't think I'll hit my 100K net worth goal, but we'll see. Here's my net worth graph for 2023. It has increased every single month, and I feel like that's not usually the case, but like I said, what I'm putting to my savings, my actual just cash sinking fund savings is what is saving my net worth. <laughs> and then down here, you can see a graph of all of 2021, 2022, and so far into 2023. Lots more ups and downs in this one, but still, still just going up, which is amazing. Final number on this sheet is my Vantage score or my credit score that is the same this month. It stayed at 805. Final thing for this video is my goal tracker. And I, I removed one more thing from here. I think I had my furniture fund on here, but I took that out. So five more goals to, to keep track of on this sheet. I did complete my emergency fund already, but that's still growing. So I figured I would just keep, keep that on here so I could track it. The only additions to my emergency fund was the interest in my high yield savings account. So that was $52.41. And obviously I've already achieved this. So just going over 100% at this point. Next goal is a 100K net worth. As I said, my net worth increased by less than $2,000. So $1,957.77. Actually, this isn't the worst month. It looks like August was, was worse than October. And then obviously, since I'm at about 71,000 or so, I am 71% of the way there. And you know, 100K would be 100%. And I don't think I'll be able to achieve that in November or December. So we'll just push that into 2024. But I am excited to see what this actually ends up being. Next goal is to make at least $100,000 gross income. And I'm excited to say that I have achieved that. So for October, my gross income between everything, my full time job, my side hustles and my extra income, I made $10,097.35. So that means I have broken the 100K mark. I'm now over 105,000, which is crazy. I have never made this amount before in my life. I'm very, very excited about it. It's it's pretty cool to see. And I like it's just made such a difference being debt-free, one, and two, having a, an online business that is like finally starting to be successful. Uh, it just makes a world of a difference. So I'm very happy that this has finally happened for me. And obviously I'm going to go quite above $100,000 for 2023. A lot of times I receive comments that are like, how are you able to contribute to your Roth IRA if your income is so high? My income is actually not that. This is my gross income. And if you look at the Roth IRA income limits, it's like, I think one 
138,000 is where you have to start contributing a reduced amount. Uh, I'm also a single person, so I'm not like filing my taxes with anybody else or, you know, like I, it's just me, myself and I when it comes to taxes and investments and stuff. So I definitely can, I don't expect to reach 138K this year. And as I keep saying, this is my gross income. So after I take the standard deduction, after I deduct what I contributed to my 401k, and after I deduct my business expenses, which is quite a lot, my income is like below 80, 80k or so, my adjusted income. I am still able to contribute to my Roth IRA. Next goal is to make $30,000 from my business income. I had already achieved this as of last month. So we are just going up into the 100% even further, 119% for October, made over 3,600, and now for the year I've made over 35,000. This year it should probably be like 40K, 42, 43K maybe, and then I am hoping that in 2024 we can really increase that so I can take my business full time. And then final goal is to spend less than $50,000 if I'm excluding my savings, investments, and business expenses. And I am tracking to, to do so. This is really important to me because if I can keep these expenses low, that means I just need less money to live off of while I take my sabbatical, while I you know explore full-time entrepreneurship, and even in the future when I retire or retire early. So it's pretty exciting to see this. And this is, you know, as life is right now. So I know things will change in the future, but seeing this is helpful just for future planning. And it shows that I can, you know, stay under 50K. I think it'll be under like 45K of, of spending for 2023. So that's promising. That is everything for October. Thank you so much for being here and for watching. If you're interested in submitting a submission for the $1,000 giveaway, scholarship, grant, whatever you want to call it, then be sure to go to the Google form in my description box. There's always lots of fun stuff and things going on down in my description box, so feel free to look around. You can find links for everything that goes on with my finances. Otherwise, I hope you all had an amazing October and have a great November. If you could please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. It really supports my channel and I will see you in my next one.